Ladies and gents, welcome back once again. All things covered. I got to give a proper intro to my guy, right? He is Patrick Peterson, but I got to put some respect on his name. The what is it? The, the, what was the act of streak? The streak again is um the longest. He has the most the missed the most interceptions. Yes, as an active player, as the most active interception leader in the National Football League. With 35 interceptions, no other than the great Patrick Peterson is here with us as well. The active interception leader in the International Football League. He was tied with Harrison, his former teammate, Harrison Smith, the hit man. They were both tied at 34. But because of an interception that came from the hands of Jimmy Garoppolo, he has the most interceptions out of any active player in the National Football League. Pat P. Got a great show for you. Got a great show for all our listeners and our viewers. But before we get to our show, and our show will consist of recapping Sunday Night Football in Viva Las Vegas, the the, the Steelers taking care of their business against the Las, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. A lot to unpack. Also, get ready for our next opponent, which is the Houston Texans. But before we do that, listen, there are some awards we got to make sure we give you guys some updates on because we're clearly right there on the cusp of winning some big time awards. So Pat P, we're a finalist, yes, for another award and our fans can help us out. Man, you can find us in the finals in the sports individual episodes category in the single awards for our super candid conversations with Steelers legend Troy Palomalu. The link to vote is in the episode description. Steeler Nation, Steeler Nation, do what you do best. Support us like you support the Steelers this past Sunday night in Las Vegas. Raiders recap. Man, the show feels so good when we get a chance to talk about a win, Pat P. Raiders yeah. took Raiders recap. Steelers took care of the business. Now, get this. The final score was 23 to 18, of course. Right, Pat P? Yep. My you prediction score. was the Steelers winning by 20 to 18. So I had the Raiders score dead on. I was only off with your score by three points. So clearly I know a little something about numbers, but that's another topic of discussion. But Pat P, man, listen, I saw it from afar watching on television, like most of our listeners, our viewers, but what was the atmosphere like, man, there in Las Vegas? But it was like a home game. Yeah, man, it was unbelievable. Um, Still the nation showed up and showed out. Had Lil Wayne there at the halftime show. Obviously, we, we wasn't able to see it. So yep. the stadium was buzzing. It was rocking. Uh, it was just a ton of energy in there every single time we was on the field. So it was an incredible atmosphere out there in Viva Las Vegas. So when we get before we get all the way within the game, there was a little issue leaving the game. Clearly, you guys were leaving on a high, feeling good, big time winning on the national stage. I, I, I'm texting you thinking you... You back at home, you tell me you still in Kansas City, right? Yeah. So what, what was that situation like? Cause you guys, how long were you on? How long were you you guys on the plane? Um like we 10 hours, eight, an extra eight, yeah, 10 hours? We, yeah, it was on the plane a while, man. It was just a freak accident. Um things said something about the oil pressure. Mm -hmm. you know, we lost oil pressure on the plane, so the, the captain wanted to get us on the ground safe as uh safe as possible. Um, just in case, you know, we had some engine problems or whatever the case may be. But we got down safely. We had to wait on another plane to come pick us up. Um, mm. Rather be safe <laughs> than in the grave or whatever you want to call it. So, um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a definitely an eventful morning and night coming from Viva Las Vegas. What? So you but guys got the plane in Las Vegas at 1130, right? Yeah, we lost. We left Las Vegas around like eleven thirty. What time do you actually get home in Pittsburgh? Man, we got like one thirty this morning. I mean, uh, this afternoon. PM. Yeah, PM. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was a long day, man. That's why, man. I was asleep right before the show, man. I was knocked out, bro. Uh, hey, I, I can say this plane. much, man. I hate being delayed. I hate being delayed on planes. You guys couldn't get off the plane, but just imagine how you guys would have felt. Having that long delay, sitting on the plane for about an extra seven hours with a loss. Man, yeah, we was talking about that, man. That 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 wouldn't have been a good feeling at all. So, um, having an opportunity to sit on the plane after a win, you know, a bunch of guys looking at film, you know, trying to you know self correct each other and, and yep. get better and move in the right direction. So, um, it was definitely much better to to be sitting on that plane for that long 
after a dub. Mm. What were the biggest keys to a big road victory for you guys? Um, first and foremost, playing solid defense, um, offense, taking the crowd out, out of it. But that wasn't really hard to do because, you know, our fans, we had more fans there uh, than the Raiders. Um, but just start start fast on defense, uh, have the offense control the game, and basically special teams, mm. little field punishments. Yeah. You know, that was, yep. that was, that, that's what you need to have to have success on the road. You know, and, and we we found a way to do that for four quarters. You know, we had we had a little hiccup with uh with that uh, first drive of the game, well, our second drive of the game actually when I lost the ball in the lights. Mm-hmm. If, so if I if I pick that ball off, the score could be or break it up. The score could be a whole lot different. You know, yeah. so take it um, there. Break break down that play for us because. Fourth and one, it was an aggressive play call by Josh McDaniels. You know what I mean? Fourth and one. I think they were in 21 personnel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Two wide receivers, two backs, one tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, you were on Jacoby Myers' side. He had a condensed split. Devontae was on opposite. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby ran a deep over, right? You were in man-to-man, right? No, we was in a, um, a cover three. Oh, he was in a cover three. Yeah, it was in a cover three. Yeah, break, break that play was, down for us. It was in a big... Kind of like uh, I'm trying to think, were we in one of our big packages where it was only two corners, one safety? I think I think you guys were. I think Mika, yeah. Mika was yeah, the only he, yeah. safety. Mika was a, yeah, so we was in one of our big packages, um, expecting pass because we seen that these guys when they're at the the logo area, any anywhere between the fifty yard line and the thirty yard line, they, they take like, shots. They like to do trick play. They like to do lateral plays. They like to do double move. They like to do flea flicker. But yep. something, a shot is coming from that area. So we knew, yep. you know, we was going to get a shot because, as Coach said, we and man, just Coach is just so smart, man. Coach is just always on top of the game. And I'll never forget, he was like, man, it was, I think we had a meeting Friday, maybe Thursday. But anyway, he was like, and we're going over, you know, we in our meetings or whatever. He was like, man, fourth and one, I can't see them running the ball and them getting stoned and here come the boo birds. So what I see them doing on the first, first, uh, first fourth down, maybe trying to get out to the flat, maybe take a shot just because they don't want to get stoned in a run play because we stoned so many people on fourth and one and they don't want the boo birds to come out. I'll be doggone. <laughs> first fourth down play. Pass. <laughs> no que- a shot. A shot. A shot. But yeah. that, we was in we was in position to make that play, man. I just lost the ball in the lights, like right at the last second. Because also with the Raiders, what they do is with Jacoby Ford, since he's the receiver that carries the run game, you got to be careful with him. Because he'll block he, and he'll crack. No doubt about it. So he'll block, he'll fake block like he did, like he was jogging a little bit and it kind of took off. So yeah. you got to kind of keep your eye on him a little bit longer because we was getting that play in practice. And Mink was like, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to see that play that quick like that because I'm looking at the uh, the backfield and he's kind of jogging off and we both got to be on the same page. So I had to carry him just a little bit longer to make sure Mink saw him Mm -hmm. to go take him. And then that's when I tried to go back to replace him um, in the middle of the field to make a play on the ball. I got in great position. I just freaking could not see the ball when I turned back around to to try to find it, you know, Mm -hmm. so. It was a great play on um on his behalf on on Adams and Garoppolo and a great call by Josh. Well, it was a risky call because it should have yeah, been a gutsy not. call. Yeah, and, and in that situation not. too, you gotta you gotta honor J- J- uh, Jacoby because if it's a run play, you gotta be able to replace. I gotta crack replace. <laughs> you gotta crack replace. So you gotta be there for that contained player. So mm-hmm. and that's why your depth wasn't really how it needed to be because you had to follow Jacoby. Long right. enough to make sure that he's not blocking. When you realize he ain't blocking, you got to make sure Mika sees him to go take him. Now I got to go try to replace him, and you got to right. find the football. Right. You know what I mean? So you got to get on your high horse because Devontae is digging. He's moving. Yeah. You got to try to go try to body position. It just, I think, too, most important, not, not locating the football clearly was a thing. But if you would have looked back faster. Yeah. You would have been in a little position to probably look. Because when you look back, the ball was already right there. Yeah, and the thing is, and that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. I was just wanted, I wanted to make sure that he was going to continue to go high over me because I was coming. So Devontae was coming this way. I'm kind of like meeting him. 
Yeah. I wanted to make sure that he was going to continue to go high and not come back up under me. You know what I mean? Because he does a great job of, you know, kind of like stack, trying to stack that line, stack that line and coming back up under the, the DB. You know, so I wanted to make sure that he was not going to try to come back up under me. Yeah. And that's why I want to try to keep keep my eye on his high shoulder until, you know, he gave me an indication that the ball was coming or, or, mm -hmm. or something like that. But also, when I look at that film, when I look at that play, I should have turned the other way as well. I should have man turned into him mm -hmm. versus zone turner. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot to learn from. And, and one thing about Devontae, he's one of the best in the world. You know what yeah. I mean? So he, he's a guy who's highly respected, future first round, first hall, first ballot Hall of Fame, in my opinion. And he's been doing it for quite some time and still doing it in a high level. But the thing I like about that play that was early on, you guys did not allow that to stand in front of you. Man, Got you to the sideline, made man. adjustments, right? You know how I roll, Mac, man. On, yeah. to, on, on to the next play. The entire defense, on to the next play. All right? Man, when, I, I, we need to get some out on the show. I told the guy, I said, man... I know that you know that wasn't my guy, but I should have made that play for us. I got us. I'm gonna go. That's get, what I'm, you said? Yeah, I'm gonna go get one back for us, man. I'm, hey, but one thing that hey, you need to start doing that more often, because I remember last <laughs> year in Minnesota when you be having these premier, uh, the, 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 these uh, 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 opportunities, the four C things, and speaking into existence. You do it. You need to do it more often. I don't know why you be doing that. And like I said too, I told you last year to start wearing white. Hey, them, that, that white man, I don't know what it is about that white boy. I get a pick every time I put that white on. Oh, oh Mag, you know I like my black. I like having hey, my black sleeve. I'm just going to test the theory one more time. I'm going to test You, you remember you used to tell me that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, no, man, mix it up. You won't listen to me. <laughs> you listen to me. Well, if you listen to me about three years ago, you'd probably have 50 of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> you'd probably have 50 of them, man. So, that. The bounce back is what I'm loving from the defense. One thing I'm starting to realize for, the, for our defense and our listeners, our viewers, where I have an opportunistic group, two things we do well, get turnovers yeah. and sack quarterbacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's what we do. We get turnovers, we sack a quarterback, and while yeah. I'm watching the game, I'm like, somebody got to make a play. I know somebody going to make a play. Yeah. And here, a guy who's just always where he needs to be, not a flashy guy, Levi. Man, talk about the game that he had, man. Big intercept. Early in the ball game, of course, the walk off interception to win the ball game. Man, how important was that? Those two plays for Levi. Man, that was huge for Levi. When I when I had the opportunity to watch the tape, um, just he just identified the formation, and you could just tell that he knew exactly what was coming. And that's a beautiful. That's the most beautiful thing. The most you know rewarding thing when you see a formation, you're like boom. I'm thinking this. Then it happened, and then you make the play. Yeah, it's like okay. My now, now, now everything I put all the hard work I put in last week, all the film study I put in last week, it paid off. You know what I mean? And, and it was just, it was just such a beautiful thing to watch on film to see like the light bulb go off in his helmet. Yeah. He looked across the formation, it was speed, he was back up. He was, oh, I know exactly what route they like to they like to run in here. And he put himself in position to make the play and put a excuse me, and on the last play of the game, um, Man, he got him a he got him a gift on that one. No question. Yeah, and, and you I take all the gifts in the National <laughs> Football League that I can get. Yeah, uh, I don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo was thinking on that one. That's you know, I, I, Yeah, I thought he was throwing it out of bounds, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, but he threw it in uh, in the field of play, and Levi made a heads up play by obviously not only picking it off, but keeping two feet and two feet and bounce uh, to end the game. So Levi had an awesome game. Um, a tremendous player. Happy that you know uh, I'm, a, I'm a part of this team with him um, because he's just like me. He loved the game so much. He dedicate all of his time to the game to make sure that we can get that uh, that positive outcome that we want on game day. And and break down your interception. You know what I mean? Because he, oh. he 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 gave you a layup also. Yeah, yeah that's why I said I take any gift. Yeah, <laughs> that a quarterback would take, give me in the National Football League. And on my play, it was a broken play. Um, I can't remember if it was third down, but mm -hmm. I know it was like second and six, third and six, somewhere in there. Uh, Jacoby uh, initially ran like a little ten yard, six it was like a stop curl hitch. route. Yeah, it was like a little hitch curl route, and um, Jimmy got a little feet antsy in the pocket. Yep. Feet got a little happy, and he was looking for someone. He scrambled to his left and came back to his right. And the next thing you know, TJ was in his space. TJ Watt was in his space. 
and he threw up a gift. And I was right where I needed to be to get my interception. And that's the crazy thing, what I said about my pick, too. I said, man, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And it's going to come to me. No question. And the good Lord hurt her. Yeah, and it came to you. And the thing is, you were on a few of those routes, man. You were right where you needed to be. Man. Great throw, great catches. <laughs> right? And it was an out route that happened after your pick with Devontae. He was about to let it go. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, even the first pass to Devontae, you had a great jump. On I did. I did. On the the yes. And the only reason I did not look back at the quarterback, just because they ran like this little double move against um, the Bills. Mm -hmm. it, was in the, it was in the red zone, but I was leery of that just because I jumped the out route last week and that's how they got me on the bang route because what they typically do is when they in and, and this is what film study come in yeah. uh uh and uh, what film study is important so in film study every time quarterback under center is quick game is either speed out if you if you uh, if you plan off and it's either a back shoulder fade if you press it so i'm like ooh, if i get this formation i'm gonna play off mm -hmm. so i break on this out and they end up the second time the, the out that you saw me break on that was the formation that's but formation. In the first quarter, it was the same formation, but they ran a bang eight. Yeah. So if you go back and look at me backpedaling, I'm literally backpedaling sideways because I'm thinking the outs coming. I say, like, oh, yeah, first play of the game. I mean, whatever play that was, uh, uh, he about to run this out. Everything about to line up perfect. I'd be damned. He ran a bang eight on me. I said, ooh. <laughs> I said, okay. Now I got to play this honest. Because you already know, because I would, when I first come in the game, I like to play it honest. I had to get uh, out of out of the gate just yep. to see my film and everything hold uh my film study hold up. But I was like, oh no, man. They only I never seen them run another route out yep. of there. It's always been a, a quick out, a speed out, or the back shoulder fade of my pressing. I'm going with the odds. I'm gonna play off and, and go for the out. Yeah. Back, back, back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the thing. Sometimes when you watch film, you, you be in mentally, you be in great positions, but then you're like, yeah, I can't, I think I know what's gonna happen. But these offensive coordinators are so savvy. They got a counter to whatever it is you think is going to happen. That's how. That's the unique thing about film yes. study and game prep and then putting it all on display on the football field. What, what was the celebration? Because I saw you look like you were surfing. Did you Did you take that from Raheem Mostert from the Dolphins? It looked like he did the same thing when he scored against honestly, the Broncos. Honestly, that, that came from nowhere. That came from out of nowhere because I still didn't – we still haven't even – coordinated anything yet. So I was just – Yeah, we, we I was see just, that. Yeah, I was just in my vibe. And I always wanted to do that since I'm from Florida. You know, we, you know, down there next to the ocean. I've never been surfing before. And uh -huh. I thought it was a great opportunity to do a little, whatever. I don't even know if that was surfing. But I think that, that looked like a little wakeboarding right And there. I don't know. It looked like you were paddling and then you jumped. Hey, you got to paddle, Mac. I know that much. You got to paddle. Yeah, you, you got to paddle. On the board to catch but, your but Mostert did, did that in one of his 10 touchdown celebrations. You know, he scored like 10 times against the, Bron the Broncos. Yeah. It felt like it. So I, I'm like, I, I wonder, did you see that? From one of his, no, I did, I did, I did see that, and I know he, I know that, I know that is his celebration because he did that. He used to do it last year, and when he played for the 49ers. 49ers, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, with that interception, like I said earlier in our show, the intro, you, you're now the the, the longest tenured defensive back with the most interceptions, right? What type of, of achievement is that? Being the active leader in career interceptions at this stage in your career, and what does that say about your career? You're number one with 35, Harrison Smith is number two with 34, Marcus Peters, who you played against is 30, he has 32, he's fourth, and Tayshawn Gibson quietly has 32 interceptions, the safety for San Francisco. And you're older than all of these guys, if I'm not mistaken, but what does that say about your career? Oh, um, man, it's, it's a blessing to, you know, obviously to be in the same breath as, you know, Harrison and, being uh, the active NFL interception leader um, just goes to show all the hard work and dedication, you know, it's paying off. Um, and, you know, I always had a goal, you know, when I came into the league of a certain amount of number of years I wanted to play and the number of interceptions mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to get in. It's just so crazy that the numbers that I set out for myself, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to, to them, <laughs> you know, so – it's a it's a dream come true. Um, it's definitely starting to feel surreal. Uh, the closer I get uh, to the end of this road and to the number that I set out for myself um, as a defensive back, once my career is all said and done, 
it's just an awesome feeling, man. It really is. So I want to continue to trend in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Get that magic number before it's all said and done. Well, we're going to do our countdown, right? I remember during the training camp episode, one of the training camp episodes, you said your goal was to get eight picks. Mm -hmm. All right? So you have one. Countdown to seven more. Starts now. Stars now. Count down to seven more stars now. Hey, before we talk more about the defense, what what, what happened with Darnell's in the suit? Did he wear the suit? What, what? No, man. He, he went out there and dog on some shorts and a T-shirt. But, hey, that's what he wanted to do. Well, that's what he wanted to do. You can't force a grown man who's 6'7 to wear a suit when he don't want to wear it. So that's what he wanted to do. And, heck, we won the ball game, most importantly. But he ate. Hey, whenever you want to put it on, you got to take some pictures on Take pictures of him and share with us so we can share with our listeners our views. Because there's a lot of people on Twitter was like, yo, what kind of suit did he wear? How does it look? And you said this man went in there and wore some shorts and a shirt. I knew he was going to do that because I've been seeing him, how he's been swagging out uh, mm. for the season. So I already knew what the what the, uh, what the what the tire and the swag was going to be. <laughs> hey, hey, well, whatever he's comfortable with, man, I'm okay with. Before we transition to the offense, speaking of Darnell and the offensive guys, this defense, man, Man, what's the ceiling for the defense? Another ball game, four sacks, three interceptions, eight quarterback hurries, five tackle for losses. You got 10 sacks on the season, tied most in the NFL, seven sacks in the, in the last two ball games. Uh, man, what's the ceiling for this this this, this defense, bro? Because y'all been putting up big-time numbers. And for the fantasy owners that play fantasy football and that have the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, the last two weeks, man, you've been jumping for joy based on what the – they've been able to provide you in production with, with fantasy. So, so what's the ceiling for this, 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 this defense, man? I think y'all just getting started. Yeah, I, I, I agree, man, because we still haven't really hit our stride, you know, far as everyone completely being on the same page, you know, mm -hmm. we have ebbs and flows throughout the game, but you know, you know how ball games can be, yep. you know, how it is when you're assembling, assemble a new group of guys together trying to buy in into this new philosophy you know but guys are are brought in that's no question about it but now it's all about communicating with one another in those game time situations mm -hmm. um, you know being you know being in, in in the heat of the battle in certain moments seeing how we can work work our way through it see how we can talk our way out of it you know so now that we have three games under our belt um, I feel like we're training in the right direction, man. I really do. <clears throat> I feel like the communication gets better each and every week. And we're making more plays each and every week. You know, so to me, that's a recipe for success when you when you when you have a defense training in the right direction mm -hmm. and also continuing to get better um each and every week, leaning on one another each and every week. And I'll tell you this much, man. The defense is trending in the right direction, and the offense is starting to come to the party. Yeah. Over the first two weeks, it's been a party only with the defense. Now the offense is coming to the party, and they actually brought some plastic cups. They brought something. You can't go to a party empty-handed. So we're starting to see the offense kind of generate a sense of confidence, more aggressiveness, right? Been waiting for Calvin to get behind somebody. Kenny Pickett was able to find him. That's something to build upon because you look at what's going on in the AFC North. I mean. The windows are open, right? The Colts beat the the Baltimore Ravens, um, and, and 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 seeing what happened with that ball game, man. There's a lot of opportunities for the Pittsburgh Steelers. For one, I I believe you have the best defense, the most opportunistic defense, clearly in the division, which is a plus. And eventually, the offense is going to start getting that thing rolling like they need to. Uh, the Raider game was a great sign in seeing that. And once you guys collectively put it all together, man. It's going, it's going to really take off. It's going to really take off. So, so far, though, the defense, man, they the sacks, they come in bunches. They become contagious. And interceptions come in bunches. They become contagious. The last few weeks, you guys have been doing both, and they will continue to come because one thing I don't see changing, pressure. Y'all will continue to put pressure on the opposing quarterback. So we got to wait and see how this play out. But in three weeks of play, you're above 500. That's the ultimate goal. You have two big wins against AFC opponents. One is an AFC North opponent in the Cleveland Browns which a lot more left to go out and get. So let's see exactly what happens. And with that being said, going to take a quick break. But when we come back, the next opponent, what Wayne said, show me my opponent. Show me my opponent. 
Yes, show me my opponent. Next up, the Houston Texans. We'll be invaded by Steeler Nation down in Houston. Stay tuned. Texans preview coming up next. Pat P, up next, the Houston Texans, man, a team that's got their first win with a rookie head coach and D'Amico Ryan, C.J. Stroud, against a team they usually have success against in Duval. Uh, remember I said, man, the first four ball games, I have an opportunity to be 3-1, and one, right? One game away from achieving that feat against a team with a young rookie quarterback. Man, what are you guys' mentality? I know you haven't gotten to the film study with the Texans yet, but when you're playing against a rookie quarterback, what's the most important thing defensively for you guys to have success against a rookie quarterback? I mean, honestly, for us, we do what we do. You know, we're 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 not trying to make the game bigger. You know, because they have a young quarterback. You know, whoever whoever's throwing the ball, we want to confuse them. We want to put pressure on them to force them into ill-advised throws. You know, that's that's just Pittsburgh's way. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not, and I just you know I'm here and I'm buying into it now. Finally, being a part of it and seeing it. That's a real thing. You know what I mean? It don't matter who is behind the center unless you're Lamar Jackson. That's going to change a little bit um, because his, you know, his athletic ability is quite different from every other quarterback in his league. Mm -hmm. You know, so crush him a little bit different, have a little bit a different game plan. But for everybody else, it's going to be the same thing. You know, rushing covers work together. I'll say this. Tank Dale is becoming a playmaker for the Texans. Damian Pierce hasn't really got things going like we thought he would be. They had some issues on the offensive line, but they got some, you know, some feisty, speedy, tight wide receivers. So this would be an intriguing matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I can't wait to see you guys go down to Texas to the Houston Texans and invade. That stadium is going to be filled with, with Steeler Nation. I can't wait to see. It's prediction time for you, Pat P. So I was very close last week. I was off by what two points, I think two or three, three points. points for your guys to score, but I was dead on with the Raiders. My prediction for this game against the Houston Texans, 22 to 16, Pittsburgh win. Let's see. I'm writing that 22 down. 22 16, Pittsburgh win. CJ Stroud will throw at least one interception. Let's see if number 20 can fall into one of those interceptions. That's my prediction as well. Like my that. score prediction, 22 16, Pittsburgh win. Steeler defense will get some more sacks and some more turnovers. And Kenny Pickett going to get that, keep that thing rolling and keep it going and keep scoring points. So, Steeler Nation, make sure you stay tuned. Watch the guys kick off and do what they need to do this upcoming Sunday. And for you guys that are going to the game, safe travels. Make sure you're extremely loud and disrespectful, and most importantly, root for the guys. Pat P, get you some rest, man. You've been on the plane for 15 hours. Yes, sir. See you on Sunday. All right, baby.